Okay, so we're going to give you an update on those four um, mares we picked up for tip. If you remember Duna here, she was the one that was like pacing in the background, super flighty, super sensitive, super cute. And uh, just as the video that you had seen before, uh, just kind of a little reminder, uh, instead of working with her uh, and the method that he was using to start. Uh, and then we are going to show you where she is right now. Um, so she was bought by a lady in Texas and she'll be going to Texas um, about the second weekend in October. Um, and so we'll just, we'll keep working with her until then. Uh, but she um, met all her tip requirements. We always like to put like at least a month on them. Um, I, I don't know how people can do it faster than that. I don't think it's very fair to the horse. Uh, very few horses can deal with that. And what's really important here is um, when you get a horse from tip, that's why I wanted to show you. To these are uh, her tip requirements that you're going to see here. This is the catching and haltering. Uh, is that you have to remember they're still wild horses. They've only had like a month of training. They're not going to be super dead broke quiet like you would a domestic horse. Um, and they're going to require continued training and working with them. Um, like you can't take them home and turn them out. They'll go feral again. Uh, so um, if uh, you're going to get a tip horse, you need to make sure that you have time to at least a few days a week still go and work with that animal. Um, you can see she leads great here. Uh, and then just a reminder, I mean, this is a little sensitive horse. Um, like I said, still wild. And you'll see right here, she'll spook. Um, and that's awesome. Do you see how she hit that halter and responded to it? So that is a halter broke horse. Uh, so it doesn't really matter if she spooks. She's allowed to spook. She's a green, fresh Mustang. Um, it's just a matter that she actually understands what that halter means um, and is focusing back on her handler. And also when you get a Tep Mustang, you need to really remember that uh, the trainer they have bonded with and they trust, uh, you still have to, as their new owner, earn that trust from them. Um, we try to, each of us, handle these horses so at least they have more than one person working with them. Uh, but you still have to be able to um, give them some time to kind of bond and start to trust you um, for them to do all the same things that they're doing with the trainer. And so here he's demonstrating that uh, she can be groomed. Um, that is another uh, tip requirement. They should uh, first catch and be able to lead and then be groomed, pick up all four feet and load on a trailer. So that's the basic tip requirements and she's doing a great job. She is super cute. She has this cute little like Araby looking head. And you can tell I'm, I'm distracting her a little bit by videoing and that's okay. Um, you could see her greenness right there and he's just kind of tells her, no, I know you're nervous, but you can't push into me. So if you're going to be getting a tip horse uh, and you go to see the trainer and your horse is, isn't minimally like these ones right here, um, don't adopt that horse or, or purchase them. That trainer needs to work harder on them. Um, I think um, here, I, there seems to be a bit of a trend of trainers wanting to kind of turn these horses over fast. I think this is fine. And not put the time in. No, I'll just stay just here. Just to make money. And that's not really serving them very well. So like I said, we do minimum of a month of training. Even if they kind of meet their requirements in two weeks, we still it. like to finish out that month um, to just get them really, really solid. You can see she's doing a great job here picking up her feet. Um, now, they're not supposed to be farrier ready for a tip. They're just supposed to be able to pick up their feet. So, uh, you know, as the new adopter owner, you need to keep working with them and working with picking up their feet and moving them different directions. A lot of times, you know, if we have one, like these these mares came and they were, their feet were great. Um, Utah, Delta Utah is where they were. And they did a great job just, you know, making sure their feet were nice and they're well taken care of. Um, but if we have a tip horse that looks like it needs a trim, uh, a sitter will definitely do a trim before they go home. And then they have that, you know, that knowledge under their belt as well. See, she's done great. This is perfect. 
So if you're getting a tip horse and they can't pick up their feet minimum like this, you, that trainer needs to do more work. Um, don't accept anything less than that. So it's like I said, that's another big reason why um, I'm giving you this update because everybody seemed to really like their first video. Uh, but also um, to let you know, you know, minimally the horse should look like this. And this is a pretty hot little horse. So um, if she can kind of keep it together and be, you know, respond and be cal this calm, um, then, you know, any, any tip horse that you go to adopt needs to have these, you know, minimum look like this. And so when we, when we load them on the trailer, we start with this one. It's super easy. It's a, a low ramp. They love to walk up in it. It's nice and big. Um, Isidro will turn them around and walk them out a few times and then also teach them to back up. So this is actually her first time backing up, and she's really funny because she thought she was supposed to turn around. Um, but, of course, he teaches them to back up before putting them on the trailer so they know what the cue means. Uh, and then the trailer next to that, this trailer, is a step up. And so we do teach them to do both uh, because we don't know what the owner, the new owner's trailer is going to be. And they should be able to load on both. So this was kind of funny. And I love that she kind of <laughs> smacked her butt there. And she really held it together and really what respected his space um, instead of running him over. So we know that what, this girl is definitely ready to go home. Sitting on the rock and watching heron fly. And this is Estrella, the other black uh, mare. Uh, she has been purchased by somebody uh, who lives in Northern California, and so she'll go there. But she's going to be staying with us to enter our under saddle program because uh, her new owner would like her started under saddle by us. And we do offer that um, after they're done with tip training. Uh, if um, if the new person uh, wants them started under saddle, um, then you know we they can enter that program and pay our regular training fee. Uh, usually takes at least three months um, to get them pretty well green broke. Um, you could see there with the haltering, um, I you know she'll get better. She's she's staying with us, so we have a little more time to work on that. Because um, I would like her to really kind of drop her head and be a little more accepting of that halter, but we're not going to force it. Um, you can see she's leading really well, and um, this kind of just illustrates how much um, that they need to keep being worked with, um, even even after you take them home. It's not like a car, you know, you tune it up and then can leave it, and it still works when you come back months later. Um, we've seen that happen a lot with these tip horses. People will get them, and then they just don't do anything with them, and then they go feral again. And then they say the tip trainer didn't do their job, um, so it's uh, you gotta you gotta maintain that. It takes years to get them where you can let them sit and then take them out, and they're the same horse. And some horses never ever even achieve that. Um, so she's doing really good. He doesn't even have her tied here. She does tie. Uh, we make sure all of our tip horses tie, um, and that they've uh, all. I think they, we usually spray them down too. And uh, she's just, she's really, really, really good horse. She's going to be one of those that's more of a quiet mind. Um, so she's great for a first time Mustang owner because she's a little bit forgiving and kind of uh, quieter and more laid back than um, Duna, who we just saw. And uh, here's her trailer loading. It's so funny because whenever I'm videoing, they're always like, wait a minute, where did that lady come from? She's behind me, and she was not there before when we did this. You can see she just, no hesitation, just walks right up in there. This is a great trailer to train them on. It's not loud. I, I've seen some people bring these, like, little stock horse that are just loud and, you know, make tons of noise, and it's very intimidating for these horses. Um, but here, you know, it's not, it's just a really inviting trailer, and then we can put them in stuff that's a little bit smaller, a little more complicated after they've gotten confident with this. And she did great with that. So 
Nutria's owner uh, actually came up and saw her um, and got to watch her or sort of show that she met her tip requirements um, and he got to kind of play with her and meet her. And uh, she also will be staying and getting started in our under saddle program, which is what she's doing here. I think this was her first or second day uh, getting started into like that sort of work where we're gonna, you know, get him um, broke to saddle. And so uh, I didn't videotape her tip requirements because the, you know, her owner came in and saw all of them. Um, so we didn't need to do that uh, when we usually tape them. And so he's just teaching her. I mean, this this is a whole video in and of itself is how he starts this. But um, he's just kind of getting her to lunge and change direction. And he wants her to disengage. He's kind of helping her out by cutting her off and having her change direction that way. And have her in a, follow the feel of that halter. And see, he wants her to disengage when he does that. So he's kind of helping her out. And she's smart. She's super, super sweet. She's another one that's a great first-time Mustang owner kind of horse. Um, she's very quiet. You can see she's super not reactive. Um, she's not reacting at all to that rope. And I think I'm pretty sure it's one of the first times he's done it. And then here he's um, actually kind of working on moving that rib cage out, kind of getting her to bend. He's showing her what he wants when he lunges her how he wants her body position to be in. And this also um, is a great exercise to get that inside hind leg to kind of step up under them and stretches their loin over their back. And see, she's starting to bend already because he's gonna want to do that under saddle. And then here, she's he's already prepping her for putting a bridle on. See, she didn't really want her ear touch. He's rubbing his hand over because that's what's gonna happen when he puts a bridle on her. She's going to need to know that. So this is another completely different story. So Gisela, actually, we sent her back to the corrals, and I'll tell you why. You can... This is just a little bit, this is very mild. She was a big biter um, and she um, was very, very aggressive. Like she doesn't even have her ears back. Like she wants to be aggressive. And he had spent a lot of time working with her. Um, you could lead her, but you couldn't turn your back. The minute you turn your back, she would lunge after you and try and attack you. She was fighting with all the other horses that we had. Um, kicking the corral. She had already had some kind of scars on her back legs and some swelling, um, which isn't unusual with these Mustangs. I mean, they come from the wild, you know, they've had rough lives. Um, but it just seemed like she was in pain, like her hind end just seemed to bother her. Uh, and she was super flighty, um, would take off. The training didn't seem to really stick. Uh, and then with that combined with this sort of um, unpredictable aggressive behavior. We have found that when horses do that, um, they are usually in pain or uncomfortable. She wasn't safe enough for our vet to come and check her out to find out what that was all about. And really, it's more of, you know, there's some Mustangs that just don't really want to be gentled and don't transition well to this sort of life. Um, and that's okay out of the, I don't know, over 100 we've done so far and um, five years of doing this, we've sent three back. So for us to send her back, it was definitely like she was not going to be able to be a safe horse for us to find a home for. Um, we could handle her, but, uh, well, I shouldn't say we, a Citero could handle her. Uh, but for us to, you know, um, it, it just would be not safe to send her with an adopter uh, with that sort of unpredictable behavior and some sort of pain issue going on. Uh, that could potentially cost a lot of money. So she went back to Delta, Utah, um, and usually with these horses, they they send them to long-term holding, um, which are big pastures that they're just like kind of unadoptable. And you can see like he's, this just never stopped. He'd already been working with her for a couple of weeks here and she was still doing that. And if he turned his back, she would just put her ears back and lunge for him. 
It was um, really strange. So that's her story. 